All right, so in this last example, we want to take this expression with lots of letters in it, and we want to um, solve for t. Okay, so we're solving for t in terms of a, b, and c. So we just have to treat a, b, and c as if they're just constants that we, just arbitrary constants, okay? All right, so I'm seeing the natural log of a quotient. So let's first of all apply, apply the quotient property and uh, we'll break that up. And so we get the natural log of what? The numerator is a b to the t minus the denominator. So natural log of c is equal to 20. All right, I want to solve for, for t. All right, so let's, <laughs> I'm seeing a product here, right? So let's see if we can break that down a little bit. So I have a times b to the t. So I'm going to break that into natural log of a plus the natural log of b to the t. And then I still have this minus natural log of c equals 20. And now, all right, I'm trying to solve for t. So I need to get t out of the exponent, right? So, uh, and I bring it out front. So I'm just going to bring that, I'm going to use the power property. And I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of a plus t natural log of b minus natural log of c equals 20. All right, from here it's all just algebra. We just need to isolate t. So I am going to, um, I'm going to isolate this, first of all, this t natural log of b. I'm going to subtract the natural log of a and add the natural log of b to both sides which will give me 20 minus the natural log of a plus the natural log of c. And then what I need to do is just divide both sides by the natural log of b. All right, so t then will be equal to 20 minus the natural log of, natural log of a plus the natural log of c all over the natural log of b. Okay, so there you go. We have an expression for t in terms of a, b, and c. All right, so now one last thing I want to mention, and we had there's these this box that talks about some common mistakes. I almost don't want to talk too much about them because <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I mean, essentially what it comes down to is that there's no distributive property for logarithms, okay? Sometimes you learn something in math and then it becomes such a habit you don't even think about it anymore, but you see something that kind of looks like it you could apply the distributed property and our brains tra play tricks on us. So be careful, be careful. It is not true that we could take the log of a sum and get the sum of the logs. That doesn't work. It's the log of a product that gives you the sum of the logs. Same way with the difference. We can't take the log of a difference and get the difference of the logs. No, 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 that doesn't work. <laughs> it's the log of a quotient that gives you the difference in the logs. Okay, so and again, like the log in, the, in that last one, you know, we have a log of a product. Well, the log of a product is the sum, right, of the logs, not the product of the logs. So don't make these mistakes. All right, so take a look at these and, um, <laughs> but don't do them, okay? These things are not true. These are very common, very common errors. And I, I think it really just comes down to, um, you know, you learn the distributive property. They look a lot like a kind of kind of a distributive property thing, but there's no distributive property for logarithms. All right, well, now you ought to be ready to work on the discussion questions, and I will see you in class.